So an interesting fact that you may not know is that plaintiffs have been exploiting the reptile theory since there have been courts. Um, but only recently has a jury consultant used that phrase to describe the functioning of three parts of the juror's brain, one of which is called the so-called reptilian complex. The reptilian brain sees a survival danger and calls upon the juror to protect him or herself and the community. Defense counsel need to counter that. Trial lawyer Kevin Schifferly, nationally recognized in the defense bar with more than 75 jury trials and hundreds of bench trials under his belt, and more than 50 published appellate decisions has tangled with the reptile all of his career. For those of us who've seen Kevin before, we'll be featuring red solo cups in this evening's hospitality suite. Please welcome Kevin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, there we go. I'm on East Coast time, so it's midday almost. Um, I am here today to talk to you, uh, that is correct, legal herpetology. Um, a few people may know what herpetology is. Uh, John confessed he had to look it up in the dictionary, being from St. Louis and all. Um, but it is, in fact, the study of reptiles. And uh, when I prepared uh, this, this topic, it's always amazing what you learn about people you thought you knew. Um, and in this case, um, this is a merit badge. And I'll leave it to your speculation and guess as to which person among us here actually has the herpetology merit badge. Maybe I'll send a hashtag uh, when I tweet about this afterwards. But hopefully at the end of this uh, short presentation, uh, you will at least uh, be on your way to earning your own legal merit badge in herpetology. So let's get underway. Um, legal uh, Lawyers and reptiles are, are not synonymous. Uh, certainly there's common parlance. Uh, we've all heard, I'm sure, the jokes referencing lawyers as snakes in the grass or other types of analogies. Um, uh, this uh, topic, though, is, is not a joke, and, and reptile, as I will explain, and as you'll see some of the materials, is in fact a theory that's developed and is being employed uh, to some success in various jurisdictions uh, by our counterparts on the other side of the bar. Um, there was a, a, a plethora of developing material, uh, not including my small gathering here today, uh, but uh, material that I'll, I'll reference at the end of this to talk a little bit more about this. Um, I will point out that um, this came from a Senate hearing, uh, and um, my secretary was unsure as to whether this was the original or the edited version of the, the picture. How, do, how does it come about, uh, the reference to reptile? Well, at a recent presentation that, that I was at uh, before a group of, of lawyers that defend trucking litigation, uh, I had a trucking case in March, and I hadn't really uh, toiled in that area in some time. Um, it was observed that plaintiff's lawyers, uh, one of the defense counsel speaking, said, you know, what's changed recently in these cases is all we're hearing about now is safety. Uh, what is a safe procedure? What is the what would have kept Mrs. Johnson safe? And the, the notion was that instead of talking about the standard of care, which we typically talked about in these cases, there's been a shift in the presentation being made by attorneys on this matter. And it was pointed out at that point in time, oh, you must be referencing the reptile. And of course I asked, well, what is the reptile? Well, the reptile is essentially a new way of thinking about an old way of communication. And it's really nothing startling and new, but it's wrapped up uh, in, in some science, and I'm going to explain that in a moment, but really pseudoscience. And, and it's, it's something that um, we all as defense litigators need to be aware of, defense lawyers in, in the trial courtroom. Uh, as indicated, this started all the way back four years ago in 2009. Uh, attorney Don Keenan, who's a South Carolina lawyer, uh, and jury consultant David Ball, who's been around for, for quite a while and is a well-renowned 
and well-respected uh, uh, consultant, mostly to the plaintiff's bar, uh, developed together a book uh, that they, they now sell, and, and I would venture to guess, uh, constitute a great deal of their living, uh, and that is Reptile, the 2009 Manual of the Plaintiff's Revolution. And this speech is going to briefly, briefly give you some highlights of, of what that is and also discuss a strategy of how to uh, counteract its employment in your case. Now, I would encourage you, uh, if you uh, find yourself heading to trial or your, your outside counsel heading to trial, to spend some time going to this website. Uh, the website is www reptilekeenanball.com and this is Mr. Keenan and Mr. Ball themselves right there and this is from the web grab that I had to uh, pull off to present to Ed to put together this presentation some three weeks ago and you can see at the top they actually report the verdicts total that they attribute to this being employed in trial strategies uh, both on a weekly report and then a total and the total at this time, just three weeks ago, was, you know, some $4,880,000,000. Well, I'm unhappy to report to you that as of this morning, that total has now uh, increased by some $90 million, according to the authors. And that just last week, they had $26 million in verdicts that they reported attributable to the employment of this um, uh, strategy in, in trials. There is a reptile hall of fame. That, how about that for our opponents on the other side? They, they actually have a hall of fame that they uh, get little plaques that they can put in their office indicating that they're a member of the reptile hall of fame. It used to be the million dollar advocates forum, but now it's the reptile hall of fame. But this website is sort of the launching point for a lot of things you want to learn about the reptile if you're interested beyond today's presentation. What do Keenan and Ball base their uh, development on? Well, they re re reflect back in, in, in their book, spend a good deal of time in their presentations, and I should also point out that they do seminars. As a matter of fact, just last week here in Los Angeles, there was a two-day seminar on, on the reptile that over 200 plaintiff's attorneys paid $4,000 each to attend. But they base it on this, this uh, neuroscience position taken by Dr. Paul McLean back in the 60s that really divided the brain into three different uh, parts. That is the reptilian complex, the paleomammalian complex, and the neomammalian complex. Um, and it's a very crude um, Science again, it's it's from the 1960s, which in a scientific world is, is centuries ago, but it it works towards the uh, aspect of what McLean called the triune brain, and he focused on the fact that, in his opinion, in his science at that time, that evolution caused our brains to develop with three complexes. Uh, again, the ones that were were displayed earlier. I'll go back. Whoop. There we go. The, the reptilian complex, which is the most base one that includes the brain stem and the cerebellum and is the oldest part of the human brain. And this R complex is that which was posited to control basic life functions. And in fact, there is some scientific validity to this notion of controlling basic life functions. But what takes it into a new world, at least for the basis of the theory that's being espoused by our opposition is that taking this triune brain and looking how it operates in jurors is that we need to tap into, and again this is from the plaintiff's perspective, tap into the R complex, trap, tap into the rep, reptilian complex which thrives on evolution and therefore talks about survival advantages and minimizes dangers to the survival aspect. And, and it is this portion of the strategy that attempts to seize on the survival mode to the plaintiff's benefit. And the major axiom of, of the presentation that is being made in the reptile 
And again, this is a, a multi, the book's quite thick, there's all these DVDs and other materials, is essentially, as I said, it's a, a new way of communicating old idea, to shift into the juror's mind to get them into survival mode when they're deciding the facts of the case. Now, I need to digress at this moment to, to report to you that, as I said, this is sort of pseudoscience. And in fact, the problem with this, this reptilian theory is, is that it's really more figurative than literal. And it's, it's a great tactic for Keenan and Ball to have seized upon this, this basis because they try to employ, quote, science to their benefit. And, and the fact is, is that modern science has proven, uh, as author Ben Thomas from the Scientific American just wrote recently, has proven this outright insane uh, in light of scientific research, and that this is really, this reptile brain aspect is really a popularization of a dubious science. But importantly, I don't think it's really the scientific basis that has anything to do with this method of presentation. The, the validity of this presentation mode that the plaintiffs have seized upon is not so much science-based, it's an attempt to, to give some science to it to make it sound more important than it is, but it's just the focus on the fact that what's more useful here is the perception that jurors have and the perceived notion that how fear operates in the minds of jurors it, rather than the actuality of, of putting this in, in complex. And what do I mean by that? Well, we've all heard that the reactions to, to fear uh, are, are multiple, but they include at, at their base level flight, fight, and, and freeze. It is the, the plaintiff's base of, of the uh, reptilian theory, the reptile theory, that let's instill essentially fear in these juries by talking about the lack of safety the lack of safety to them, to the community, not so much the single plaintiff involved in a case. And therefore, out of this, we will get fight from these jurors, and they will fight for survival for the plaintiff and for the good of the plaintiff's theory in the case. Of course, the problem with that is, as you can see here, you can't predict what the reaction will be. And so it's, it's my position, uh, having looked at some of these materials, that this is a very um, crude way of presenting uh, a case and one that may not result in, in what you want. Um, because in fact, the, 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 while security and safety is a, is a very powerful human motivator, um, you've got to free that from this reptilian analogy uh, because it's not the only human motivator. Um, and the, plain, the plaintiff's bar takes to point out that it is a smart defendant in a case will in fact put powerful principles at uh, stake themselves. Responsibility, innovation in the case of products uh, litigation, and just general fairness, which also come into play. Let's also point out that the idea of being manipulated is something that, that we think, or I think certainly, can be very threatening uh, to uh, individuals in a jury pool. What about the, rev the, uh, the revolution of the reptile from 2009? Keenan and Ball actually, and, I, and there should be some credit given where credit is due, again, in this new way of thinking about old ideas, actually point out that they believe that, that what they're doing is seizing upon a defense tool. And they talk about tort reform. They use the tor term tort deform. But how for years, it has been the plaintiffs or the defense bars um, uh, seizing upon this notion of fear um, that has been employed. Fear of, well, if we let litigation run amok, we won't have access to courtrooms. We won't have certain devices in our, our um, uh, society. And they try to turn the worm, so to speak, uh, in using the reptile as part of their strategy in the case. And this shift by the plaintiff's bar begins by their defining danger. Not danger in the concept of what is it really at issue in the case, that is danger by a failure to adhere to a standard of care, 
but by trying to tie the concept of danger to community safety. And as I, I mention this, I, I have to advise you, I've just, and I think these four notes here, summarized probably one half day of the presentation that's made. So I'm not giving it justice. Um, but it's a very important part of this is to shift and turn the focus psychologically from what the plaintiffs have alleged has been the defense theory to, to their benefit. So how does this done? Well, there are three questions that they posit that should be asked by every plaintiff's counsel in employing the trial strategy when they sit down and look at their case. How likely was it that someone might be hurt? How much harm could it have caused, not did it cause to this particular plaintiff? And could the harm cause other damage to others in other situations? By doing this, they begin to try to tap into what they call the reptile's uh, uh, fight of danger to protect themselves and their community. And it begins to give them, and this is their terminology, info to show the tentacles of danger that the plaintiff must show in a case to the community to be able to recover. And again, the focus is not on the actual harm in the case, but on the maximum harm. And therefore, you, the reptiles in the jury, and I don't think jurors would like to know they're being called reptiles, but you have the power to uh, promote that safety. And there are six rules that are employed um, that they encourage the plaintiffs to look at and develop. And I will advise you, if you are involved in a trial and you start seeing these in the course of discovery and other points that, that the reptile is probably at play here, this, this theory that's being exposed, but it all focuses on developing rules. And, and these are the points that they say that every rule should have. And it really goes to the development of what Keenan and Ball references the umbrella rule that should be employed in every case. And that umbrella rule is, quote, a blank is not allowed to needlessly endanger the public. And you can substitute in there, in the case of a med mal case, a doctor is not allowed to needlessly endanger the public. Trucking case, a trucker is not allowed to do it, and so on and so forth. So it really focuses on using these six points to get to the, the point of developing the so-called umbrella rule. And this starts in written discovery and depositions and mostly on getting admissions to what are innocuous, relatively seeming concepts. Sir, wouldn't you agree with me that putting truckers on the road, that truckers should consider the safety of the public? Well, who's not going to agree with something like that? Uh, and it builds off of these concepts, and it gets into getting concessions and agreements from the defense counsel experts on these seemingly simple propositions. Another aspect of the reptile is the development of codes. And they spend a great deal of time in their books and in their DVDs and their presentations talking about this. And these are not codes in this concept of what we as the defense side call themes in a, um, a case we might have, but more so codes that you need to employ. And the biggest one they, they focus on is association of mobility with good health. In the case of a severely injured or injured plaintiff, um, it is really the lack of mobility that they've tapped into, and this has been a David Ball theme for years, that is a problem. They recognize that there are going to be conflicting codes. For instance, in the case of a med mal case, some people would associate with a doctor with uh, a controlling person uh, uh, in a room. Others would say doctor, hero, and so you have to deal with those. But it's always focused on the harms and losses that a community would suffer in the theory that's being put forth. Now briefly, um, there are some defense strategies uh, that you can use to attack this. One of them uh, that's being developed, and of course this has been out there for four years, and I would say that the defense bar, I won't say has been slow in reacting to this, but we are now starting to see the development of a lot of materials on how to deal with this. And, and one of them really is, is that essentially reptile at its core, the theory, is really a reconstituted golden rule. You're asking the jury to focus on community harm as opposed to the actual harm sustained. It's a fear-based theory, as I've indicated. Um, although, 
the er area that's most difficult to deal with is that of perhaps punitive damages and how to employ a defense strategy in, in that case. I would indicate to you that there are developing materials um, in the literature. One of the, the best ones that I could reference to you was a uh, uh, South Carolina defense lawyer, uh, David Marshall, wrote uh, in DRI magazine an article, Lizards and Snakes in the Courtroom, Oh My. Uh, I would encourage you to read that as well as uh, publications in the IADC and FCC, FDCC dealing with this, this strategy. In closing, the reptile is here and we're going to have to deal with it. And I hope I've given you some glimmer into what the reptile is and how we might deal with it. Thank you. Thank you.